Hello, um, viewers. I'm not sure where this is. Uh, we got a new high tech setup, setup from the the last two episodes, um, so we we've moved it into the back room. Um, you're watching Talk Video. My name is William Burnett, and I'm sitting here with a uh, Mr. Danny Wolfers. Hello, H hello, William. Um, some 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 of you might know him as Lego Welt, or uh, Gladio, or um, yeah, l lots of names. Uh, Polarius. Yeah, that that one is pretty old i guess oh. or smuckles or people don't know that yeah so uh, um welcome to to my show i got a i got a new video uh podcast called talk video uh what do you think about that yeah i'm i'm very excited because uh, uh yeah i saw the first uh, episode so I'm very excited to be in the third one yeah you got an exclusive preview they're not they're not published yet i, I, was, oh. wait, I was waiting to have like a, a oh okay i didn't know that because i'm not a, i'm yeah. trying to get comfortable here this is a still adjusting i don't um, follow the internet that much no i, so I mean I, w I wanted to have like a few of them uh, uh made before i published them and then and then that way if some of them aren't so good they don't really <laughs> notice that much you know because if you put out one and it's not good then yeah like a cat catalog yeah i mean or, I, or like a series like a season is what my idea was oh like uh, then people can binge watch it yeah yeah they okay. sit there and they eat uh, fruit loops or whatever they do oh yeah are you also gonna insert pictures if we're talking about a certain pi uh, uh how do you call it subject that or there's uh, gonna be a picture on the screen of the subject <sighs> i i have to I don't know. I'm still learning. I I I want I want to definitely have like links to YouTube stuff. Like say, for instance, you talk about a song, so maybe in the description you could have like you know links and like a time when that thing is on. But then I guess you could take it further and have it on the screen. But I, that seems like a lot of work. But we'll see. I, I, that sounds like a good I, good suggestion. Yeah, or a picture that scrolls like are in the in the site. Or it could be like a game. It like bounces around, and you could it'd be hard to click on it. <laughs> yeah, or you have to guess when it when it hits the corner, like on a DVD uh, logo <laughs> intro. Oh, these are fantastic. See, I need I needed these uh, this input from a uh, 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 yeah these uh, media genius like <laughs> yourself. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't really know. My my idea with this is that I, I want people to feel like they're part of our conversation, and uh, I feel like that's kind of what my my goal is with these things so i don't know if we're going to go through it and if we want to go through some of your history if we're, or if you have like some subjects that you wanted to talk about um i, I guess we do a little bit i'll do a little bit of an intro I, for those that don't know i i've known you for quite a while like yeah 2001 yeah since think, yeah yeah 15 20 years or so um so i have a little bit of i know i know your mother um and uh i know you know I, I know some stuff i've I've seen your childhood home and stuff like that so um you're from the netherlands yes from a schreveningen a, a small uh, uh beach resort fisherman's um uh, village uh that's part of uh the hague which is a big city in uh, holland so how, how many people are in the hague <coughs> these days well, the, the greater conurbation or the metro, uh, metropolis, or how do you say that? Conurbation? Yeah, c conurbation means know, the entire uh, region of yeah. the city. It's, it's probably one million people. And a, a lot of times when, when I play shows somewhere and they say, oh, where are you from? Are you from Amsterdam? And I always say, no, I'm, I'm from The Hague. And then most of people know where it is, but some people have no clue where it is. They just know, I mean, the thing you think of is the world court, is, is there? A yeah, record? yeah, the, the, the criminal uh, justice court, and uh, we have the um, the international organization that does like the nuclear weapon uh, treaties and stuff like that. Why did it, why did it end up there? Um, I don't know, because uh, yeah, it has something to do with the early uh, peace uh, treaties. You have the De Hague Convention that was in the early 20th century. But I, I don't know much about that stuff. Uh, You're just a musician, huh? Yeah. Um, so so you were born and raised in, in Schreveningen. But to answer, uh, I, I oh, told sorry. you one million people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I You answered yeah, that okay, part. Yeah. So you're in, you're in this small beach resort town, which is... It's very quiet most of the year, and then you know the the three or four nice days a year, there's people pissing Pe on the sidewalk. Yeah, but now it's there are much more nicer days because of global warming. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it, it means like all the you know your country won't the, exist. All the, all the imbeciles come out, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, you don't even really go to the beach. No, so sometimes more to the quieter parts. You know? Oh, okay. And um, so you're born born and raised basically in the same you know what 10 block radius 
Um, yeah, you could say that. I, I lived uh, uh, a few years in a, a suburb. I, I, I grew up my very early years in Scheveningen, but then there was a little, uh, how do you call it, time spell? Is it a spell of time sure. in English? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> that I lived in a, a, a suburb, uh, but then we quickly moved back to Scheveningen, yeah. Uh, and did, did you have brothers and sisters growing up? Or? Uh, no, 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 no. Just you and your parents? Yes. Okay. And then, uh, so anything, any major uh, events that, that shaped you to who you are today that you remember, like a, you know, like a moldy cheese or something? I don't know. <laughs> moldy cheese? I don't know, man. <laughs> what, what? That, that uh, affected the brain or something? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, it's, it's, um, don't, think, don't think about that too hard. Uh. Oh, um, uh, you mean... Uh, like it's just something from your childhood that, that you, you can remember, like what you went to the mall and you bought some tapes or uh, you were uh, like a, met your teen idol or, or uh, you went to skateboarding or... Uh, no, I, I never like. did skateboarding. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand on a skateboard. So so you weren't like in the sports or, or anything like that? You weren't on the like uh, hacky sack team or something? No, I'm, I'm very <laughs> bad at sports. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's why I became uh, uh, interested in uh, synthesizers and electronic music. So you, uh, you never went outside? Uh, basically, yeah. That's the, that's the, yeah. <laughs> so you were just, no, well, as a child, you were in your room? No, oh, it, it, it's, it's not like that, you know. The, the beginning of my uh, childhood was pretty normal. Uh, just like, uh, you know, with uh, playing outside with with friends you know <laughs> I, I had friends <laughs> no way yeah. and uh yeah i don't know and then yeah in, in my early uh, uh how do you call it uh te teenage years or ad adolescence yeah. yeah um yeah i started uh becoming more of a recluse i guess <laughs> and and w that that was because uh, i got a computer from my parents what kind of computer I was that the first computer I got was a Commodore 64, and I guess that changed my life. Yeah. 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 And what? And so, so you you get you, did you, the parents just bought it for you, or you like went out and asked for it? Wow, well, I, I I kind of asked for it, but there was also this thing with parents then that you had to give your child a computer. But it was already like pretty late that we got a computer, uh, like other families or kids they they had computers, but. Uh, I, I got one in like 1989, and then the Commodore 64 wasn't really like the yeah, like most modern. It's like machine. six years old already, or something. Yeah, even eight years, mm. I think. Yeah, or is it 1992? But um, yeah, that. Uh, and so at this point, you're you're 13 years old or something. No, uh, when when I got the Commodore 64, I was maybe 11. 11. Okay. Yeah. And then um, then later. Because my parents saw that uh, it was promising me and computers. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, uh, I got a Commodore Amiga, which is a really uh, way more advanced computer, which you could make music with and, and uh, do animations and graphics and stuff. But you were so you you got the computer to make or, or that was your first go-to thing was like i'm gonna make music on this thing or no. you play video games yeah or? first you're you're a kid you think oh cool i can play uh or, yeah you think you, you you have the future in how in in, in your house you know and, and then you turn it on and you play like a some driving game yeah like yeah, was, but yeah I, I was always quickly bored with computer playing computer games because yeah I, I found it quite yeah there, there was not a real reason to to play them it's yeah. uh, uh, but i i really love to see the world they uh, that was created within these computer games that was uh, was really fascinated by that so so did you you Learned how to program some stuff, or you got started. Yeah, but simple uh, codes? Uh, a very simple programming, like in basic, and that that's still a hobby of mine. Programming uh, really crappy games in uh, Commodore uh, Basic. But that's that that's like the if then program. Kind yeah, of that that's like programming for uh, yeah for the yeah. Uh, like not so smart people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've really toned down the language. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so you're you 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 had the Commodore sixty. Four, yeah, and then you got the Amiga, yeah, and uh, um, then so then you're like uh listening to uh like the radio and stuff and uh, uh 
um, you mean uh, uh, like uh, musical influences, or you, yeah, you, that, you're that's, alluding that's to that? That's yeah. my question. Yeah. Yeah, but then also it's the Commodore 64 and Amiga uh, was also a huge influence uh, musically because you had the video game soundtracks. Yeah, like. And a lot of times uh, that's uh, overlooked a bit, but uh, that that was a huge influence for a lot of uh, electronic music producers uh, in the 90s. But like, like which games? Uh, well, th there were famous uh, Commodore 64 composers like uh, Rob Hubert and Ben Daglish. Mm. And uh, yeah, they, they made amazing soundtracks. Uh, a lot of times, especially uh, Rob Hubert would just rip off like some rock rock record and put it in the really simplistic melodies but then it was way better than the original proc rock record so he's, he's doing these cover <coughs> versions but yeah uh, not all the time but uh, uh, he did that a lot and and ben deglish was more original he would make these amazing almost john carpenter style uh, and soundtracks <laughs> and the the chip of the commodore 64 the sound chip yeah. was quite advanced yeah. it, it's almost like a real little synthesizer and <coughs> did these or the t the two guys i already forgot their name but uh did they also produce were they only making music for uh, video games, or did they make other stuff? I think um, mostly they were mostly known for their uh, Commodore 64 and maybe some other uh, platform uh, uh, computers. Because um, I mean, did they like? Were they program like? You know, it's like it seems to me like it's kind of like a John Carpenter. Like he made the movie and he needed some music, so he made it. You think it, were they programming the games too, and then they no made the no music? The, 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 those would be like they would just be hired by the uh, coding team or the publisher of the computer game. Uh -huh. The coding uh, was done mostly by a I don't know sixteen year old kid what in his bedroom. You know, a Commodore is that it's a British company? No, it's American. Is it? Oh, yeah. what do I know? We see. I don't. Know, the weird thing to me is that I gr I had. I'm. We're about the same age and. I, we had Atari. Yeah, we had Atari, and and Th that is true. Cause C Commodore, Commodore was not the Commodore sixty four was not very popular in America, but in Europe it was huge. I mean, th yeah. they sold thirty million uh, copies of that computer in uh, but, I mean, in the rest of the world. And that yeah. that's the Pong. Pong was on right. The original Pong was on. I don't know on the on the. Was that Commodore sixty? I don't because no, I remember that, 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 and then I remember that, that is that, that is from the seventies. Pong. Well, that, I remember that, playing it at my friend's house on his like weird big screen TV. Yeah, but that, that was not on the Commodore sixty four. And then there was like the asteroids. Is that a, that's that's yeah, also that, that, Atari also? Yeah, that, that's that's really old. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's just weird to me that, that there's that separation when it's an American company, and like. Every European person I know had had a Commodore 64, and Americans like only like the really weird kid had one, you know, like <laughs> yeah, like the hippies. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't even know if they were hippies. They were like a maybe they got it like at a pawn shop or something, or maybe their parents were European or something. Yeah, or, or they were like uh, artists. And, and maybe <laughs> I don't know. And okay, so you, you, uh, let, let's move on. I'm getting distracted. Yeah, uh, you got a um, so you get this computer and you start to try to make some tracks, maybe. Or are you um, just fiddling around? Yeah, but it w uh, the, the Commodore, um, uh, we're talking about the Amiga now, right? I Sorry. I, I, yeah, I, I, it, it's fine. It, it, it's, it's all the same. Is it same the same thing. company? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, That's it, why I mix yeah, them yeah, up. But the, the, the Commodore Amiga is a more advanced, like, modern computer uh, uh, with a real sampling chip. Okay. And uh, That's the Sid chip. For example, Gobber music and uh, Jungle, early Jungle, and a lot of techno music was made with this computer. Because okay. it was very cheap and uh, you didn't need anything, uh, just a, a floppy disk with a music program. And uh, the music program I used was uh, Octamet yeah. and it was free and it came with a magazine one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then when I bought that magazine and I put the floppy in, it, yeah, that, that uh, changed my life, I guess. Yeah. And and at the time, were, was music like a thing in your life? You're yeah, like buying Beastie Boys tapes or something, or no, not not n uh, not so much Beastie Boys. I was I was uh, really fascinated by the first uh, house music and acid music, especially already at that time. Yeah, because it was in Holland. That was uh, on on the radio and on TV. Okay. Uh, it that was really uh, even like weird stuff like uh, Armando. 
I, I would know about that. I, I, well, it's not weird, but uh, uh, how do you call it's it? Por- it's underground here. I mean, it yeah, or uh, underground. That that's uh, I know that from MTV. Yeah, they weren't playing that on. Yeah, I MTV. know. Yeah, strange. And uh, a- Aphex Twin and stuff that that would be on the uh, on the uh, MTV. And so this is now nineteen ninety early nineties one yeah. ninety two and then I I was a little kid or there would be a documentary about the Roland TB three hundred three on the MTV news yeah and that just blew my head you know it was like wow I I I, I need that you so know? so you bought a three hundred three um yeah that took a few years I, I think uh, of course. Uh, I started with buying a completely useless thing like a Yamaha DX21 FM synthesizer because uh, the, yeah, the, there was no real information about uh, synthesizers. There was no internet. You couldn't like, yeah, uh, research. Vintage synth.org didn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> or, um, not that it's very helpful these days. But um, uh, the the only thing was that my dad got a, got me a book from the library uh, in Dutch about uh, synthesizers. Yeah. And so you you went down to the store and said, uh, "Get me a DX twenty one or." or no, it, 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 it. there was an advertisement in the local newspaper, and oh. it said it's good for house music or something. And I said, "Wow, okay." And it was <laughs> cheap, so I got that. And then I came home, and you couldn't do. I thought you couldn't make acid sounds with it but it was an fm synth and there were no knobs to turn you know because the only thing i wanted was like a knob that where you could make like filter you know like wow 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 (laughs) that's why they they put the big filter knob now on all the synths you know yeah yeah. so that's what the people want but um of course i had no other choice than to learn the dx21 it's a good synth i still have mine yeah in my sad uh, lonely evenings i (laughs) I spent uh, uh, in the in the attic, you know, <laughs> but uh, those were fruitful, I guess. So, yeah. so you you know, you were while you were learning this thing, you're 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 listening to some uh, pirate radio, playing along, or you're just trying to hook it to your your co- Amiga. Yeah, uh, but I was uh, listening to pirate radio and to commercial radio and uh, everything, and and I was also also already started buying records because yeah. there were a lot of. Uh, uh, um, underground uh, uh, electronic music record stores, also in The Hague, and uh, yeah, like uh, like Hot Mix from Ferens, but that that was a little bit later. Yeah, that was 1994, I think. 1990. So pretty much the same. So you go into Hot Mix, which is for some history, this is run by uh, Ferens. Van yeah, it, it was uh, basically the first uh, record store in The Hague, or maybe even Holland, that was really specialized in the weirder, uh, or like in the a- American, uh, how do you call it? It's like Detro- how- Detroit and Chicago, house and techno, basically, and New York techno, and uh, Midwest uh, 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 rave sound, or acid sound, yes, like drop bass network. Because okay. uh, back then, most of the stores in Holland were focused on that mellow house and gobber, what like, is, what's mellow house yeah mellow house is a typical dutch uh thing uh that was that's basically everything that was not uh gobber or hardcore music was called mellow house but typically mellow house is like um club music with organs with so ha- house organs it's like cc peniston yeah that was <laughs> considered real mellow house yeah oh, interesting and so <clears throat> did you meet so Fer- when i say Ferenc, it's if who now runs intergalactic fm um, did you meet him and other people at that point, or you were just like a customer, yeah, like a weird? Uh, I, I, I never saw him at the shop. Actually, there was always somebody else working. But by that time, I didn't really know who, who, who that person sounds would about be. right. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think uh, later, uh, later I heard on the radio um, about these uh, persons. <laughs> who are these persons? Well, like IF and uh, Unit Mobius. Oh, Unit like Mobius. E and, and stuff. And uh, that, that was also an, a very important, um, yeah, uh, how do you call it, uh, event. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's really important. But I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Because they, they came from The Hague. Yeah. And it was not like a, a gobber or mellow music, but it was like, yeah, the, like the Detroit and Chicago music, but then weirder and quite unique or something 
And then I thought, wow, these come from The Hague. That's so cool. That that means I, I can I can also make a record, <laughs> and and be of importance or something, you know? Because that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, in, in 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 the end, I, I psychologically, w w I don't know what. what uh, I don't know what it's all about. I'm just yeah. uh, <laughs> talking shit. Um, so at this point, you start going to some uh, some of these underground events, or or, or you're just still kind of looking at from afar and learning. Do you remember? Um, yeah. I, I went to parties a little bit later before I um, uh, I, I first was like uh, mainly focusing on uh, production and record collecting and it was also because yeah I don't, I don't know I didn't, didn't go outside that much you know <laughs> <laughs> and the idea of going in the middle of the night to uh, to some uh, weird squat that uh, sounded I will, uh, uh, no but uh, Maybe when I was like <laughs> seventeen or eight, eighteen, I I started uh, going to the. Once you got your driver's license. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I I remember the first party I went to by by myself, because uh, back then there was also I didn't know anybody who was into it. So 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 let's describe this day. So you 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 know you're like at school all day. It's on a Friday or yeah Saturday. yeah. And I I had some friends at school, but they thought this was very weird that I listened to this music so and, you, you and even to make it, they, they would think I was crazy. You know. So you told your friends you're like I'm gonna go to this party tonight. Is yeah, but these people wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I knew they wouldn't go, but um, it was actually uh, Mike Paradina's music. He okay. was playing in Amsterdam, so I went all the way by myself uh, to Amsterdam. Yeah, with, with the night train <laughs> was a real, real big thing, and then um, and your parents said, "Sure, go ahead." Yeah, yeah, they were very supportive. Oh, because it's the Netherlands; it's pretty safe. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, and um, well, then I went there, uh, there, and then I saw it, and that uh, yeah, was okay. Did you? Did you? T so, so you get on the tram and you ride. You go to the station. You take the train there. You walk to the club. Yeah, I walked. In Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what club was it? Do you remember? Yeah, it was nope. Paradiso. It was Paradiso. Sun Sonic X Festival, I think. And uh, and did, was there, who else was playing with uh, Mike Paradinas? It's music, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was a huge fan back then. So this is heavy I IDM period, like nineteen ninety yeah, yeah, six yeah. or I, something. I loved it. Yeah, uh, yeah not EDM. I uh, IDM. Yeah, with the a. intelligent or yeah, inte armchair techno. Yeah, and re reflex records. Brain you know, dance. I, I was like Aphex Twin's biggest fan, you know, and. Um, uh, yeah. So did he? So he was just playing. It was just him on the bill. So you're like, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. And, like and did you didn't you didn't talk to anybody, or did you get get a beer? Or I got a beer. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. you're like, yeah, I want to get a beer. Yeah. <laughs> In a plastic cup. These yeah. are the details I want to know. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> it all went downhill from there. Yeah, I I, I vaguely remember <laughs> some people talking to me, but I didn't really talk back, and then. Uh, yeah, then I, I left again and I went back. Yeah. So, so w looking around in the audience, you were you you were probably one of the younger people there, or um, not I, really? I guess, attention. but there weren't that many people. No, it, no. <laughs> it's like twelve. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but what and what what was it, what was his live show at the point at that point? Was it laptops? Because laptops well, weren't really I, strong I, enough that. No, no, but uh, I think he brought a sampler or something, but something didn't work, so he had to bring his Atari ST with. I don't know, and then he only played uh, tracks from his uh, Tango Invective album, okay. which I liked very much. So he just did a playback, and no, I don't think it was a playback, but uh, well, a playback on the Atari ST running the MIDI, uh, mm. I guess. I don't know. Interesting, and, and and so was that that was was that a disappointment to you, or or was it just amazing? Like, oh, you're like, oh, I could do that, or mixed. Oh, I didn't think I can do that, but uh, so it, it did. That, so you're like, oh, this is cool. I want to go to more of these things, or or just sure, yeah. That, that's, that's what, cool. what and can you remember some other shows you went to after that, or, or? yeah, in uh, in the Hague, uh, a lot of shows. Um, uh, that's where I saw Atecra. Mm -hmm. They would uh, play in this uh, thing and uh, Future. 
Like with the pH. Yeah, yeah, from uh, acid, from tracks. acid tracks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And um, then I, because I had that Amiga, I started doing uh, video animations. You know, like this uh, '90s fractal uh, dance. Uh, you know, psychedelic. Uh, so you could have been a VJ. Well, I was. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> so d so I I went to the this uh, <laughs> local club where all this uh, bands played, which was called the Part. Mm -hmm. um uh i said hey you want to hire me as a vj and they said yeah sure and then i i even made money with it yeah it was wow i like making money just bringing my amigas and 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 two uh video uh, uh vhs uh, recorders yeah and then i had a video mixer and then i would just uh, record stuff from the discovery channel or something you know like a uh what was it like a documentary about north vietnamese uh, air force pilots uh, training or something <coughs> and, and I, I would slow that down and um, yeah, you know, that's in, I didn't know that that's very interesting uh, you, maybe uh, you should uh, incorporate that into your live set now you could you, yeah, you but could I, I was ask so, for more I was money so traumatized by it that I didn't why what why, <laughs> what happened no nothing nothing uh, um, the DJ's got more chicks no it's, <laughs> it's um um <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know, but when I started, uh, I, I was also doing music at the same time, but it wasn't really uh, yet going anywhere. Okay. And uh, they had a VJing thing also, not really, but I, I, I VJed for um, for for future, I think, that party and for some <laughs> other, <What? laughs> for, for some other bands. Also, I think um, Speedy J or something, and yeah, I don't know. Um <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Do you tell you don't tell a lot of people this, do you? No, but it's 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 of no importance, you know. I think. <laughs> okay. Uh, I but don't know. it it was very cutting edge and cyberpunk to do that in that time. And I so guess, so yeah. so you were just you're mixing together the images. What how, I know I understand how a video mixer works with the VHS, but what what you're adding fractals. So the. On the, the Amiga, uh, you had a program called Deluxe Paint, which you could make uh, animations with. And so that's just another channel on the video mixer, and you mix that in yeah, layers. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, and you, on the Amiga, you had a thing called a Gen Lock, mm -hmm. where you could also overlay like the the Amiga graphics with the video image, kind of like a chroma key or luma key or something. But and w w the, but the the they wouldn't interact. It was just layers on on top of the. Wow, well, because it was in kind of analog, it would uh, interact. It would oh, became like fuzzy. Oh, know, okay, yeah, you know, yeah. Like all, you know, like how you know how those things in the nineties look. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. All, Okay, like, so like like the video clip of uh, Stacker Humanoid. Okay. <laughs> or or a uh, Dominator. All right, all right. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, th that's what it looked like exactly. Yeah. And 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 so your VJ career ended. And, and and because you started making good music, or or because you you felt more comfortable, or just lost yeah, interest. It, it, it was just a you know a, a, a path without a future, you know, a, a dead end. <laughs> uh, you know, um, but I was also because uh, was also doing an um, what do you call it an animation school at mm -hmm. the time. Or I went to animation school, or it was around the same time, yeah. And uh, but so wait, this is a, what 1995 now, or so. Yeah, I think 1996. So this is you know even, what yeah. that that's before. There's not not even a G3 out. This is no, it's all Amiga. Um, all Amiga. Amiga. So yeah, it's a way better computer than the G3. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm sure people could argue with you, but uh, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um. But at school, when you're when you're you're doing animation, at this point, is it still like you're drawing and doing like a stop motion stuff, or, or yeah, uh, we had to do that too. And we, like we claymation, we, we learn, yeah, all, uh, everything, all facets of the animation and, world, and but also computer animation with Amigas. At that school, they had a uh, whole classrooms full with uh, very fancy Commodore Amiga. And this was 4000s. in Hilversum. Yeah, yeah, the HKU, the higher school of. Uh, arts yeah something and uh and so this is you you went to college there and uh um 
I guess at this point you're so you're now you're drinking beers. Yeah, and, and I also started uh, for the first time uh, interacting with uh, people like, that were interesting to hang out with because they're. they're <laughs> For the, for the first time in your life. <laughs> well, th- th- this sounds horrible, but um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, you know, like like-minded souls yeah, that yeah. were also into uh, electronic music, p- people that would know who Aphex Twin was, or even more obscure stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. And th- th- that was like really cool if you come from, uh, you know, from the high school where, you know, <laughs> where, where people and, and would. Are you st- uh, and so at this point you met like Brian and yeah yeah Brian yeah Brian Schiff Schreif. yeah Orc Electronic yeah and uh, and so you and is there a couple more people or was he he one of the ones you really partnered up no, with? It was a whole whole uh, plethora of people. Yeah. <laughs> plethora. Pleth plethora. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. So yeah. Also, uh, Mar- Marcus. Uh, Do I know him? No, you don't know him, but I, I recently got in contact with him again. And um, yeah, he's actually the guy that taught up the name Lego Welt. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because ha- he was in a band called Normally Invisible. Okay. <laughs> and um, had a, uh, we were playing together in, in some club in The Hague, and it was my first live show ever, I guess. <laughs> and so, so you, uh, you, you, you never had a DJ career you just started playing live because yeah because i was uh, making music you know was, um, just like totally inspired by aphex twin and and uh, and, uh music yeah and 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 so many and people, chicago all know, this, okay. like unit maybe is detroit techno and Mod- model 500 uh, you know i was also a huge fan of yeah, model yeah. yeah juan atkins <laughs> juan uh, and so so y- you met Brian and some other like-minded people. Yeah, and uh, you immediately started hanging out with them, or were they were they were in the same program as you, or no, no, that was the coolest thing of that school. They, they were in all kinds of different. Uh, Marcus did uh, music technology, mm-hmm. and uh, the s- the school also had like a anal- a studio, an analog studio with like uh, ARP twenty six hundreds and a uh, Roland system hundred uh, uh, modular system and. Um, old synthesizers and nobody used it at that yeah, time. Yeah, the stuff probably didn't work, did it? No, it worked, oh. but uh, people <laughs> thought it was like everybody was using like a Roland D20 or something oh. or uh, or the uh, computer. And, and, uh, and were, were any of these people like more l- linked into any sort of scene or they were just kind of these like weird uh, nerds like you from their mother's yeah, attic? I guess, yeah. Um, s- Weird scene. You, there were no, but I mean, were there like you know, you know, you start meeting like I mean, you say you meet like-minded people, but you're you're coming from you know a complete isolation. It yeah, seems yeah. like uh, were any of these other people like you start meeting like cool guys, you know? Like yeah, but some of them also came out of uh, isolation. We were all like little uh, chicklets, you know, like little <laughs> uh, like bursting out of the egg. Yeah, and then coming into this this yeah um, fascinating. Uh, how do you call it? Incubator <laughs> of creativity, wow. which was the, uh, the the school. And uh, yeah, that was very exciting. It was really like almost like an artistic movement, you know. And, um, you know, like you read about in, uh, in uh, you know, like... like a Dadaism. Yeah, or, or, you know, no Bauhaus now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, then a really imbecile version. So you started this new movement. Uh, uh, what, what was it called? <laughs> There's no name for it. Or? Well, actually, I I can remember that that some people really had these ideas, you know, like which, well, we have to make a uh, how do you call that when the an, an, an like statement or uh, but if uh, an, um, there there's a word for that like uh, a, a what? Yeah, if if, if if manifesto. Manifesto. Or, 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 yeah, or, that, that's it, our yeah. operator over here, Francois, yeah. helped us out with the vocabulary. Yeah, but then me and Brian would laugh at that, you know. Like who? So, so, <laughs> so who, who who was suggesting that you write a manifesto? <laughs> oh, I don't know these these persons. Na- I forgot the names of these persons. I guess they're probably. Or maybe maybe it was Brian. No, no, no. I don't think I don't know no. if Brian would do that or no. not. Uh, hello, Brian. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Something, but maybe he had to. 
he wanted to make a new uh, sort of uh, movie style or something. So, he, but so he was doing film stuff. Yeah, yeah. Film and and then uh, I hang out so much with these uh, film school people that I thought, ah, oh, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do that too. So I changed from animation to film. And then, uh, <laughs> and, and so, and then you, uh, you graduated. Or did it? What, what else happened? I know I was gonna I was gonna move on to where you wrote your thesis about the Simpsons, because that's the only part I know about your uh, your education. But maybe some others. There was you're when you're in the Europe, you go to school for like twenty years, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I think it was like uh, five years. You know, uh, so that's more normal. So so, so five years. What, you know, are you starting to like get girlfriends and uh, be cool guy, or or you weren't really distracted with that? You were just. Uh, making music yeah yeah i was making music i was and uh, did you start yeah. to put out records and stuff or, or yeah in the later years of the i think the first record i released was in 1999 that was a pimp shifter on bunker records and how did that come about well me and brian went to a, a party in the hague where ferenc and Guy and unit mabius uh, were playing and we had made a demo cassette with uh, our music and then uh, we, yeah, we saw them there, and we we had never talked with them, and this was 1997 or 1996 or something. And I said, oh, uh, shall we give the demo tape to Ferenc or to Guy? <laughs> <laughs> Guy seemed a lot nicer. Yeah, I, I think Guy uh, was a little bit more approachable so because he was standing closer or something. So, so when we say Ferenc and Guy, Ferenc is IF. Yeah. And Guy is Guy Tavares. Yes, yeah, a uh, unit maybe. Who runs Bunker Records. Jan van Dijvenford, yeah. And was also, yeah. So just to clarify that. And so you gave the demo to, to Guy. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Guy called us. And and talked to your mother first, do you think? or? Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> what do you think she thought? She's like, well, he, he's quite a character, you know. Do you think, oh, do you yeah, think my, he chatted my, with my, her on the phone? Or my he my just mom asked? loves Guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she always uh, asks uh, about him. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. And so, so Guy calls and says... Yeah, well, I, I don't know, like in his uh, <laughs> you know, weird little <laughs> voice, like... <laughs> I really love this stuff. You know, I don't whatever. think that's what he sounds like, but no, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but then uh, we were very happy, of course. You know, uh, that, that when you, uh, as an artist, when you hear your that you the first time you hear that they're gonna release a record, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's pretty cool, you know. And so these tracks, uh, Brian Org Electronic, who this record was together, Legowalt and Org Electronic. Derek in North Korea. There were three records. There was Pimp Shifter for me. There was the Eye That Never Sleeps from Orc Electronique. Mm -hmm. And there, there were a the few uh, records we made together. The first one was uh, We Leben in Pussywelt and uh, Derek in North Korea. Mm -hmm. And there were a few other ones. And and these all came out within what? The same yeah, like year? Yeah, within one year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Even half a year. Yeah. And that basically established uh, our uh, musical... Um, and then, and then he hegemony. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do Hege hegemony. He hegemony. I I, your okay. vocabulary is much better than mine. Uh, I, I like to use these fancy words. <laughs> okay, so so now you're on Bunker Records. This is like the 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 Hague Bunker Records, not to be confused with. There's another one now, which is in New in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So this is. But that's called the Bunker. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I think. I don't know. Or just Bunker New York. Yeah. I'm not sure, but this is for me. This is this is the original bunker. Was there another bunker before that? I don't know. No, there's also a bunker records in Australia, but it's like an, uh, a trans label from uh, 2012 or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so Guy at this time is he's a pretty freaky guy, and you're this like sheltered college student yeah but, but we were also pretty freaky still i know? guess you are pretty freaky. sheltered you and, know uh, did the other, the question i was gonna ask earlier is that that um these tracks you made did, was brian was coming to your studio and making them there or, or he had a place yeah too? The, the, uh, uh, brian started uh, uh getting stuff and making his own studio a little bit too so yeah, uh, yeah. So. and uh, he he was living in uh them boss them boss yeah. still and uh so you guys are kind of these like you're he's 
you're meeting in Hilversum and then taking the train back to either his place yeah, or, yeah, or to the Hague. Yeah, yeah. We, we went all over because he could travel for free with the train. To and, and you're and, yeah. and you're a student and you and you're playing some parties. And so, when did you start playing outside of the Hague, or, or how, how how long did that take? Once the record started selling. Yeah, I I think uh, the the first gigs in the first few years like uh, were were mostly in Holland. I think our first international gig was actually before we released the record with Guy in, in Lille, I think, in France. Okay. And then he made the mistake. Uh, he thought we were playing at six o'clock in the afternoon, but then it was six o'clock in the night or something the following day or something. Yeah. I so remember that. So, so you didn't play or? or no, you no, we played. And so you just sat and waited. No, they got us a hotel even. Wow. And it was like, wow, we got a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. And uh, so you you played in Lille. And then uh, this just kind of, you finished school, I guess, right around the same time or, or a little Yeah, later? I think that was 2002 when oh, I finished. So it, or 2001 I finished school. So I think we were still at school when we first met. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So, um, so... Now this brings into the era where I I know I met you or something. So you're playing, you put out these records, and uh, for some reason they did pretty well. This was like in a time period around what this was ninety nine two thousand yeah maybe ninety eight maybe barely yeah and the first vinyl record was nineteen ninety nine or that was the compilation maybe in nineteen ninety eight and I think, and, yeah. and these records were were the way that I found them is that there was a a few things that came out around that time, you know, there was the like IF Space Invaders or Smoking Grass. Yeah, that was, was a, a big, little bit earlier, I think. Big yeah. thing that kind of, you know, made it to the U.S. at least. Yeah, that was a super hit. Yeah, yeah and uh, then also there's things like uh, from Detroit still, there was like Doppler Effect and mm -hmm. Adult Airsets Audio. Yeah. And uh, then there's also other things, you know, like uh, uh, International GJ Gigolo was a pretty big thing too mm -hmm. um, with like Miss Kitten and the Hacker. And they also put out some Doppler effect. So this is this 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 oh, geez. This is this is that time. Um and uh did you start you started sorry I got distracted but it's raining it's outside. It's raining. Now. It's nice though. Um but uh so this this time you started playing it, it became like a thing. This was a whole like a new thing where it was like all these uh punk rock people and uh people that wouldn't normally have listened to dance music which is me started listening to to DJ stuff. Mm -hmm. and it seems like that's what happened in that era and you were a part of it with his bunker records. Even even things like Invasion Planet came and kind of crossed over too. Mm -hmm. Uh and it also uh, it brought in this new era where the internet was was a big deal. Yeah, it was v very important. And we had uh we had these f uh internet communities that mm -hmm. started forming uh, around the main one, the one where I met you was a Global Darkness yeah, from uh, TLR. TLR yeah, yeah. ran it through Bunker Records, sort of. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what the deal was, but I, I just remember finding it because you could read like, oh, there's a, a biography about Bobby Orlando. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I don't know what else was on there. There was there was like bios of, of, mm -hmm. of artists. And then you you went to this forum and you would see people commenting like, I can't sync my 808 to my computer. Yeah, stuff like that. And then you would go on there and say like, "Hey, what do I need to buy to get my uh stuff to work?" you yeah. know. Yeah. And uh and so I I don't know. I'm I don't know where I'm headed with this, but uh, that that was an important period I, I feel like uh, cuz it seems like we're still all many people that were on this forum are still friends today and they so these are like people who started discogs mm -hmm. some of them were were like early they which is you know you can't even remember a time without discogs yeah some of them became like big superstars yeah and, i mean you would laugh like how oh, you're gonna put every record on the internet ha ha, ha. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right man and uh now they're i don't know what they're doing but they're yeah, probably okay. just contributing to it and they're not yeah. making any money yeah, I don't know. maybe they're multi-millionaires but um so so i'm just setting the scene and this you know this is also the early time I don't know what the festival scene was like in Europe, but uh, the the thing that was here was DMF, uh, the Detroit Electronic Music Festival, which is now called Movement or something else. And uh, it was a free festival, mm -hmm. and uh, that was also starting. So it was this was kind of like a new era, and and uh, it seems like you were you were there at the beginning of it and a, a part of it. Um, 
I don't know where I'm heading for that. I'm just trying to set the scene for for what what yeah, they, they, was they were going very on. exciting times. Exciting times, but they, they were not um, maybe only in hindsight, you know. Yeah, because, because back then it it was pretty mundane, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so I mean, basically, we were just talking on these internet forums and like learning about uh you know how to you know whatever Italo record was cool that week and uh you know uh complaining about yeah, electro clash and then there was electro clash yeah. which which we hated but i don't know why but just yeah i don't know but it, it was something it wasn't I, cool I, I, yeah something it wasn't yeah you don't you do, when you're that age you don't want to be labeled or something yeah i don't know we because it was also coming from some kind of like punk punk attitude background with unit maybe a sergi uh, that had that you know and then there was this like um we were put in this or pinch and hold yeah but I, I, why thing. didn't why didn't we like electro clash i never really just because it was a stupid name yeah or maybe because it was very superficial yeah because i mean i remember I, i would go to the like larry t party like at lux you mm -hmm. know berliniumsburg with the spencer product and You would go. It would be the only party you would go to, and you would hear adult and some techno. But that, I mean, they would also play like the Clash and like mm -hmm. I don't know some other, you know, these. Stomp. I guess they did. They played stuff that we really didn't like. I guess it's one of those things where it's so close to what you like that it's worse. Is it something? Does that exist? Like when it's like people from the outside that don't know what you're doing, uh, they uh, they see it and and they think it's what you do but it's not yeah maybe that was it you does know? that make that it people thought you were also like a like an electro clash person or something yeah and, and i guess it was more fashion and we weren't really fashionable yeah that back then we hated fashion <laughs> uh, <laughs> at anything that has to do with fashion that was uh you know. did we but then we played at the tribeca grand yeah of course we would play those parties <laughs> you know and uh, fashion parties too of course you and know, uh, our, our uh, how do you call it our morals are easily uh, <laughs> are swayed easily by the dollar <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know we only move for money now so 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 that brought you know with this this era i so i met you and i was working with some uh, safety numbers and uh they hate me now and probably still want to fight and which is weird but uh And uh, I organized some tours, and we would drive around the country. This is just to explain. I just want to yeah, tell that, people that, what that, it was like before. Th those were truly magic, uh, magic times. Like with like seven people in a in a small van driving <laughs> three days straight <laughs> from Chicago to Seattle. Yeah, and then playing uh, all these for weird twelve people. Yeah, there there would yeah. <laughs> it's but if this is this is before you know like a you know flying jet blue and getting picked up and taking an uber and yeah and, and having an airbnb and booking agencies and um yeah. professional this, promoters this was like put a post on a forum and say anybody live in cleveland yeah w w that wants to book us yeah and then you would get you know you play at this you know whatever bar and And th I mean, it it was I don't know. It was there was something to it, you know. Like, do you do you remember anything specific from that time? You have a good story from that or wow, th era? A lot of stories. <laughs> I, um, you know, of course, there's the the um, the, the famous uh, incident in Texas. Which one? <laughs> which oh, which oh, uh, where where uh, Bangkok Impact uh, dislocated his knee while dancing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, me and Brian were playing, and Sami from Bangkok Impact was dancing, and then he dislocated his knee. Now I remember, like the the we had to stop our music or something, and then these ambulance people came in. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, Sami is is uh, shot or something. No, I I, I was I was dancing with 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 it, Sammy at the time when we were doing I was doing this thing where you like yeah yeah that's your, your knees fault side it's to your side. fault and he was laughing haha uh -huh, because he's yeah. always happy, <laughs> and he broke and I just. He he looked at me and his knee did something and he went yeah, on the ground it, and and I just it's reached. like a flexible fin. They cannot dance like you. No, and I just held his leg and it was like, you know, this way. And Minto was there too. Yeah, Minto yeah, from Down, from low, down low, records, and he's a yeah. like a physical therapist. He was like, oh, he, he, let me take over, and then yeah. oh, okay. So, but he had to go to the hospital, right? Yeah, yeah. and and they they and th so here's the other part of that story that is great is I was the driver pretty much. He was the only other one with a driver's license, mm -hmm. so uh, it made the trip much more difficult. And we had to cancel some gigs and uh, some bad stuff happened, some threats and things. But uh, that's another story. Uh, 
Yeah, for, that's for the biography in, in 20 years. <laughs> for the extended, I don't, yeah. I mean, it's not even worth talking about, but uh, those times, I mean, or but, yeah, like th that we were in Fargo or something, you know, or lost in the, in the Badlands or near. Uh, yeah, when, when we let Sammy and Kasson drive. Yeah. We, that, we went uh, like four hours out of the uh, way. <laughs> you were all asleep. But then Sami and Kasse were navigating in in a, like a lonely desert highway in New Mexico. Going no, we were in no. We, this was in like ne Idaho and Nebraska. Oh. This was on the way to Seattle, the longest drive. Oh. And they were like listening to Basic Channel, like freaking out, like listening to Basic Channel over and over. It just put me to sleep, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good yeah. times. And uh, so we did this a couple times. You know, uh, we went. We would drive all the way around. You know, we go to Seattle, Portland. Mm -hmm. Uh, San Francisco. We played at that rave, and they were expecting Bunker to be like Unit Mobius style. Do you remember that one? They thought you guys were gonna play like a uh, not where, where where was that in San Francisco when they oh, had, when they had the rotten beer and we all got sick. Really? Yeah, that was you. I don't think you had any. I was. Like, oh. <laughs> no, th th we played at this rave, and they were expecting the like Unit Mobius, like the hard, the early Bunker Acid oh, Planet and, and stuff. Oh, and we would play. And you like showed up and played like Italo. Yeah, yeah. Italo or Grandmaster Flash, <laughs> the message or something. Yeah, and, and they weren't they weren't having it. The guy was not happy. Wow, fuck him, you know. Yeah, I, I, they or were they were nice before the, we played. Uh, yeah, or you played. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I vaguely remember, and we also got in in a fight in in Hollywood once. There was just me and you playing, <laughs> and uh, then th there was uh, who was this? That was a real asshole. I don't remember. Who we that we guy. played at this this bar with with a fish tank, and we were sitting on a on a couch, and I had a one one or something, and then uh, well, okay, it was uh, we we did Smeculator Life, <laughs> and then uh, <clears throat> the guy gave us money, and he gave us like t twenty euros, and then I said to you like, what the fuck? We got twenty euros for for this gig. What the fuck is this? And then the guy heard heard us, and then he said, like, oh, yeah, you want to fight? You want to go to the ghetto and fight? <laughs> Who was this? I, I don't remember what that guy's name was. I don't know where he came from. or. Okay, well, if you're listening, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> or just you know, write us a message. Let's talk, you know. Like, no, I don't have to talk with an asshole. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I can't, I, I'd ha I'm not sure if I could find out who it was or not. That was a weird one. That was before Smaculator. That was... Yeah, he's probably in prison. Was that was the same time that we played at the Echo? Yeah, yeah. The first time we met Love Fingers. Yeah, Love Fingers. And yeah. uh, before Love Fingers, was he Love Fingers yet? He he might have just be they, before the blog. Oh, did he have another name? I don't think so. Name? I guess not. Like Space Duck or something. <laughs> what? Space Dog or Space Duck? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Oh Lord! All right, so we're we're getting a little distracted here. So 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 just my point is that, um, you put some time in with this stuff, this all this music stuff. You came at some point. The I think the one of the main reasons we were able to do this is that uh, we didn't make any money. We we had seven people. We would get like five hundred dollars, and the club would probably still lose money. Um, yeah, paying you, us. You came back at the end of the. And we had to pay for the minus, windshield minus on, on the three, van. Three hundred uh, euros. But the the Dutch government was giving Guy money. Really? Yeah. Oh, but we didn't never. No, saw Guy anything. got all the money. <laughs> I think so. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Really? I yeah. think he was getting, and then TLR figured out how to do it later. I think. Oh, but that was to buy the airplane tickets or something. I'm not sure. I just there was some government. Because I I, stuff I remember that this out. this one other funny story that we were in 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 uh, New York or something, and it was the end of the tour, and we had absolutely no money left. I mean, the, all five of us had like ten dollars together, <laughs> and we had to buy. We went to the dollar store, one dollar store, to get uh, food to to buy buy a meal. Yeah, and then we let Guy do the selection, <laughs> and he he bought like a can of pilpo. Oh, <laughs> gross! <laughs> like this uh, octopus, I don't know, octopus, and a bag of rice, and like the hottest peppers he could find his hands on. <laughs> and and he just ate it raw, or what? He's gonna no, he he put it all together, and then uh, um, yeah, nobody could eat it. It, it was too spicy. <laughs> And then for for the dessert, he he made like um, a big bowl of uh, mashed bananas and tangerines, like mashed. And he ate a whole whole bowl. And then he that was at uh, Dan Physics' house, I think. When he still <coughs> lived in New Jersey. 
Yeah, and then I remember Guy in the middle of the living room like like a sausage in a sleeping bag. Like, oh, I ate too many banana porridge. <laughs> oh, I'm sick, I'm sick. But, well, there were these like really artistic techno people visiting, like these real like German like almost like from that movie the big lebowski like autobahn <laughs> the band like really and also had like these uh, these te cyber techno and they, they were just looking at him in, in disgust and yeah <laughs> so <laughs> that, that, that's a good story yeah <laughs> so did, what did, you didn't die though you, you made it yeah yeah of course we always made it you know it's it's not that uh, this n the hardship is, of course, nothing compared <laughs> to real hardship that people yeah, in the world the have to go through. Luxurious you know? problems. Yeah, first um, first world problems. Uh, so so these these tours, you know, they were memorable, and we we had good times. And uh, slowly, uh, also the weird thing too is that uh, that same time it was probably uh, what until two thousand six or seven, we were doing these tours like regularly. Even in Europe, we I would go and drive around. And uh, this this was also a time when the record industry and, and, and a lot of these distributors like completely failed. Yeah. Like, I don't understand. It doesn't, I didn't realize it at the time, but now looking back is like, I don't understand how any of this happened because, you know, this was back, this is when it started being like, instead of selling a thousand, 10,000 copies of a record, you, you were start, started selling 300. So this, this, yeah, this entered that era, era of the music industry, you know, these big distributors yeah, were closing. It, it was like a big uh, lull or valley of, uh, and of then, destruction. And and what, I don't remember, like, when did it start picking up again? Do you remember? It was 2007 or 8, it kind of... I think 2010 stuff stuff really started slowly emerging again, like a phoenix from the ashes. And uh, definitely Clone Records survived the onslaught. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Rush Hour, but Rush Hour is... It was a little later. Yeah, no, it was at the same time. But, but they weren't cool for a long time or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it's more housey or something, but also not. I don't know. At, at that time, it was all... Uh, one big happy family. I uh, know. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. <coughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I know. Um, uh, yeah, but it 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 went on. A so uh, so what do you, what happened? I d I don't know. It just started. It, uh, it became more popular, or, or uh, yeah, we 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 just kept in hanging there long enough oh, i guess at, at the same th so so once you 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 keep hanging in there long enough you you become uh, older and more cult or something yeah and maybe and we should mention also this the same time i guess another internet community that was pretty strong i guess around this time that was after was the cbs yeah. intergalactic fm of course yeah. community which is the kind of i guess the beginning of online radio yeah, maybe that had something to do with because that always kept on going strong. Yeah. Uh, so that that also survived through the through the through all the ups and downs. To the to the how do you call it uh, apocalypse of uh, yeah. electronic music or something. Yeah. Um, but then so, uh, slowly it became this thing where you get like a booking agent and then uh, you know you get a. Yeah, the, so, so things and th th things became almost uh, very professional uh, all of a sudden, you know, uh, compared to how we did it and um, started uh, making money with it. <laughs> and do do you remember that moment, or do you did you? Or uh, was it, 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 slow it went ca kind of gr gradually because my uh, booking agency Octopus came from Clone yeah. Records. It was originally like a booking agency for uh, Surge. To, yeah, for Surge. And um, yeah, then they started uh, doing their yeah, they became their, uh, their own uh, booking agency and yeah. uh, and uh, I guess when you're on an agency somehow, for me then at least I I I um I became a little bit more professional too. Um, that sounds. Uh, well, how so? Well, for example, uh, uh, playing gigs. But I don't. I don't. I never noticed a difference. 
Yeah. Uh, but f- f- yeah, it maybe it's just no, not, a, not, not, no, this just, is just, the, just a feeling or something, you know. Not, uh, it's not an insult. This is a, a compliment. It's that you've always been a trooper. Like I remember, you know, times everyone else would be sick, and you'd be like, oh, and then you would just play for four or five hours, and yeah. everyone else would be just sick in the van. You'd be like, I mean, and you would be just as sick, and you would still play. Or maybe it's because there are more people coming to the show now, and then you feel yeah. you have some more responsibility or something. And wh- how 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 did that change your music? I mean, what you're playing more hits or what? <sighs> um, more boom boom boom. I I, I don't really think I, it changes changed my my uh, my music that much because yeah. I'm I'm not making like a, a EDM or a, no. <laughs> I hope uh, well, so some people will think that I, I make boring techno now would it probably but. I don't think it's still pretty much the same, right? Yeah, it's the same shit, you know. And uh, <laughs> sorry, did I cut you off? No, no, oh. I, I didn't know where I was going with yeah, this. Yeah, me neither. Uh, you, get, you get lost every once in a while. Yeah, you gotta kind of re- yeah. My <laughs> my brain goes in evaporates. You yeah, know, you just you just flew in today from a. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm also a little bit uh, jet lagged, tired. But, um, know, uh, but so not, nothing too controversial, I hope. <laughs> No, you're not. You you weren't up all night with hookers last night. No, I did. Of course not. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not one like one of those artists. Like, uh, I don't, we don't yeah, need to mention. Do people. I need to name some names? No, I, I mean, can name them all. That would be fun. But all uh, the artists that do that. So. We're, we're not allowed to do that these days. Ne- oh, no, uh, no, uh, shaming or whatever. I don't know. When. Shaming. Oh, yeah. I don't, uh, um, so so where can we go now? Let's let's. Uh, Let's go into to modern times. Uh, that was uh, enough reminiscing. Yeah. Um, so now it, it it seems everything is pro now. You know, you go everything. Your whole schedule is made up. You know what time you're gonna play, how long you're gonna play for, what gear you're gonna have. Um, is is that good? Do you like that? Is 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 it? What do you think about that? Is it boring sometimes that it's there's no uh. Uh, like uh, errors or uh, but there's a lot of errors. Yeah. <laughs> Still, you know. But so, w- like, what kind of things are happening now? You're you're playing. So you go around. You play in these like a, uh, you know, festivals and big clubs and uh, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, these London, what's it? Ministry of Sound and places like that. Well, I played there once. It's not that <laughs> I played there. I, I mean, I played a good room here. That's that's not like the like a. I don't play in Ibiza or anything. You know? I think you played there once, right? No, I, I I didn't play there, but you went there. I went there, yeah. Oh. It was the most horrible place on earth. <laughs> I cannot imagine. It's it's it, it's has nothing to do with music. It's so shallow, so stupid. <laughs> so it beat. Uh, yeah. Oh, the hatred's gonna start coming out. Yeah. So um, uh, we should probably think of something good to talk about now. What do you think? Yeah, but uh, I think in 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 the end, for me, because I get older, of, uh, also of course. So for me, it's 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 very nice to have this, uh, you know, uh, um, fundamental base. Know where you came from. Yeah, or I mean, what you were just talking about, like how it is that it's a little oh. bit more professional ah, oh. these days. You know? So you're not going to get sick. But it, it's not like that, you know. I also play like weird clubs still. Yeah. Uh, it's not like I, I I went over to some uh, Euro trends. Uh, and 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 the other thing too that uh, that I've noticed recently is you've been doing a lot of other other things besides music. You know, you made some weird videos and uh, you, you started doing these like art projects, like uh, I don't know, is it markers or paintings or some, yeah, some I, kind I of started, drawings. Yeah, I started drawing and painting. Uh, yeah, which which I I find very uh, nice to do. And is is that like a planned escape out of this club hellhole, or or is <laughs> <laughs> out of the purgatory of uh, of uh, electronic touring. music uh, scene? Um, it's it. I I really like to do it. Uh, it's uh, when I'm when I'm doing that, I'm I'm incredibly uh, happy. So it started. I mean, when I started to notice that you you had this label, Strange Life, and uh, you were doing like the album covers. Yeah. And uh, then you know you do some some of the art. But now it's not Nightwind Records. Nightwind. Yeah, is, yeah. Nightwind is Strange the new Life. One. It's it's the same thing, but it's another name. Uh, yeah. Because I I always thought like the 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 the, the artwork of a lot of music or album releases is really fucking bad. Yeah. 
and uh, especially you know sometimes you see that that there's not one one little uh, gram of effort in it <laughs> or um what, what i'm gonna say is um also yeah so i, I started to to paint my own covers yeah and then sometimes i put myself in it uh to um show people that that i made the artwork myself because a lot of times uh, people would just uh, use artwork from the internet yeah that that happens so much you know and or they uh, without even notifying the person that made the original picture or photograph you know they're just like sampling or something yeah they just put it on there so and i know if i would put a drawing of something then people would think i took it from the internet so in the first few releases on nightwind i would always put myself there so people would know oh that's not a picture from the internet <laughs> <laughs> that's so that, that's the but i i mean you you also told me at, at certain times that it was like a, a therapeutic you enjoy drawing yeah yeah so that that's a part of it too um and the other thing too you started doing like a uh this uh, uh sound sound tracking movies and and stuff like that is there going to be more of that or are you going to make the movies or just well, it would be fun to make the movies but uh, you know like we we women <coughs> of course made relics of the past you know yeah and i'm sure there's going to be another relics of the past uh, or something similar yeah i've i've got this uh idea for a movie with puppets yeah with puppets kind of like a uh, jim uh what, what's his jim name henson. jim henson but then um it's it's called uh, gnome gnome hunter that's the working title it sounds like a video game yeah, it's it's kind of like a uh, troll hunter, the Norwegian movies, but instead of trolls, it's with gnomes. I don't know that. Uh, uh, so, uh, and you want me to help with this, or, or am I part of this? Yeah, no. you're gonna be one of the actors. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the thing was that was hard. We it took a lot of work. I know. I know you. You did a lot of the. I sat there. I was there. I was there, sitting right next to you. It, it was. It was a lot of work to make those movies. Um, but the cool thing is now is, is, you know, we have the technology to where we can all do it all ourselves, you know. Um, it's pretty crazy, you know, and, and uh, that, you know, like this podcast now, we can do a, a three-camera setup. One of them is out right now, but we'll, we'll fix it oh, really? in oh, a minute. Uh, that, that's, that's fine, right? Yeah, but we it's... We still a, have two. It's fine. We'll yeah. keep going. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, um, the but, show must go on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's crazy that, you know the technology has developed so much that you can do all this stuff yourself. There's no more, uh, you don't, you don't need a record labels. You don't need a, a distribution network. Um, you know, you can just put all your stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. and, and, and that, I feel like you've kind of evolved along with that. You know, you've had, you know, now you're, you know, probably not as trustworthy with labels and stuff like that. You're doing more stuff with Bandcamp. Yeah. Um, Bandcamp is fantastic. And, uh, and so what what's happening with that you're you're doing stuff that uh bandcamp only now or or it's just a sub supplemental thing uh with nightwind records or yeah yeah no just in general yeah but there's also stuff on vinyl and uh, cassette tape and sometimes cd coming still yeah so you're still putting out records yeah yeah sure of course and on other labels too you know a, a lot of records yeah mm. Yes, uh, on on lice. I did a new Gladio. Uh, oh, record. that's right. Yeah, finally there's some melody on the on the label. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ron. <laughs> I was thinking of changing my sound to more industrial. Uh, <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, no, uh, some uh, some uh, distortion. No, 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 distortion pedal. No, there's. I don't know what's going on with music now. It's weird. Like everything, thinks it's it's. it's there's this like industrial trend or whatever going on. But it's, it's because they're, the times are dark, Will. That's, that's why people want to <coughs> listen to uh, to harsh music. Because they're angry. I, don't, I want like a nice song, you know, like a nice, a oh, nice okay. melody and something to sing along to, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, um, like the Carpenters. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I just, it seems like, but the thing is, is that everybody, it kind of is, is all the same somehow. It's not like, you know, you used to be able to like, you you would put a uh, no. Yeah, that, that's, you, there's still enough artists that do uh, yeah. uh, unique stuff. Uh, I know what you mean. A, a lot a lot of stuff. There's a lot of like it just sounds like Ableton. You know, they all yeah, have yeah, the same uh, compressor uh, and the same. Uh, 
I just but, I but want w within that that forest of uh, Ableton uh, lookalikes. There's there's a uh, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, <coughs> um, yeah. artists that are authentic. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You just gotta look for them. <coughs> All right. So I, uh, I, I I really like these people that say that on Twitter. Like, <laughs> wait, what? Uh, what? 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 What are they saying on Twitter? <laughs> or I don't know. Like, like <laughs> these. Um, I don't know. Like, only bad music is coming out these days. Oh, so I, I know. I know. I, I was trying not to get to that area. It's not a, a positive thing. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but I, but I, I'm finding more music now than I ever have. Yeah, yeah me too. And it's so, so much. But it's uh, not cool not stuff. necessarily new music, you know. Oh yeah, but it, it there's a lot of people making uh, old style music. You yeah. Know, but uh, uh, what? Uh, so so you're you're out there touring quite a bit. Have you seen it? what's uh, some good stuff lately? Like a, you know, like I I go you know I go out sometimes, mm -hmm. not as much as I used to, and. uh Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's pretty good, you know? Nobody, never, it's all like mixed fine. Some of the songs are okay. Some better than others. Do, have you seen anything that really stands out as like some uh, next level thing? Or even even mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, uh, the one thing that springs to my mind is when I played on Sustained Release Festival last uh last september or something and before me uh played um from, from chapel hill uh what's her name uh, uh f not financial assets L liquid, liquid, acid. liquid assets yeah and that was life was uh, uh, i was quite flabbergasted how the, the flow of the the, the um, melodies and chords and stuff it, it was very hypnotic music yeah and yeah it might not work so much on uh when you download it on bandcamp but live it was really intense yeah and well there's there's a lot of stuff like that uh out there you know yeah doesn't sound like it oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, know, you know i'm I, i'm really bad if if somebody asks for an example if somebody says, yeah. "Oh, what are the ten best songs uh, currently?" I'm well, like, that, I'm not trying to do that. I just want, I'm trying to have like a, a open discussion about what you know something you saw that was pretty okay. I'm yeah, but you know, the, the, and and there's yeah. like right now as we're talking, there are like you know, thousands of uh, isolated super dorks in their <laughs> in their bedroom making the best music ever. How do you do? You think they're gonna, how are they? What's going to happen next? Are they going to be like a, a youtube only or is it going to be they're going to leave their house or what, what do you see as, as coming going to be the next thing people always have to have to leave their house <laughs> <laughs> do they though yeah well they, they have to get food but in, in the end they <laughs> no, also want to hear their music in a, in a club or loud or something you know yeah but now they got like headphones that like sound like a club yeah but uh, people also <laughs> you know the, the, uh, the really basically in in the end you know like maybe the real um how do you call it? The, the framework of all this is that that people want to meet other people yeah i i mean even to an extreme basic thing people want to find mates yeah I, well, I, for for progeny or you know for their future gene pool to survive so they have to go out and meet in in somewhere yeah that's very um metaphysical of no, but i mean I, I i've got even a different metaphysical one for you is mm. it i don't know where i heard this recently but i i liked it um is that uh there, it's like a, a, a I don't know if it's a ritual or what, what when you go to a concert and every everyone is experiencing the same thing at the same time it's a it's like a, a special thing and it's like at that moment you're all experiencing the same thing together and for some reason people people crave this you know like I don't there's that is a some kind of weird human yeah, yeah like, like almost desire. like a, a spiritual uh, uh how do you call it a spiritual uh, happening yeah I, I mean is that that's i mean you know in history it's you know it, at one point it was like in, it would happen through religion that you know yeah, a, a they church would go ceremony. to church and they would like oh the church and now it, now it's the, the club and yeah yeah or some people still go to church or wherever <laughs> not, not that they're going you know but um 
Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I guess. I but uh, of course, there will be something new which we cannot even fathom yet. You know. Yeah. Um, interesting. So um, I think get, we're getting uh, a little. Let's end it on that. Uh, uh, do you have yeah, any yeah. any other uh, 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 ideas or, or things you'd like to promote or? or no, I'm always also bad at those questions. Like, uh, you, know. you got anything to sell? You know, buy stuff on Bandcamp. Uh, check out you, you yeah. give oh wait the, you yeah. give away a lot of website stuff on your website yeah legoweb.org you can uh, get free software and sample packs and uh, also music and uh, and yeah. mixes and uh, I I also do like uh, fashion uh, things like this oh uh, that's a new uh, this is an uh, Ansonic ESQ uh, uh, ESQ one sweater from my fashion line. Yeah, and uh, and uh, well, uh, Sarah, my girlfriend, makes makes them. She's sc screen prints. Where where do you buy these? Um, well, I I probably at Clone or something, but <laughs> not yet. What about, all right, and uh, so look buy look out for your uh, all the stuffs on your website. Yeah, yeah, it's the, pretty the, well the, updated. Yeah, you, you can, it's updated on a daily basis almost. Oh, so dang! You don't even have to go to Facebook or Twitter. You can just survive by going to legovelt.org. <laughs> you can survive. All right. Well, um, thank you very much for coming. Uh, uh hope it wasn't too uh, stressful. No, it was a pleasure. I hope I didn't brabble too much. Uh, no, I don't know. We'll check in the editing. Okay. You know. But uh, uh, a little bit. Yeah. Thank, thanks again to uh, Francois from the Lot Radio for helping us out. Yeah, thank with everything. You, thank you, Francois. And uh, thanks to uh, uh, Focus Right for giving us a sound card. Uh, appreciate yeah. that. Um, see you next time.